Hey, can you hear me now? Okay. So, uh, hi, I'm uh, I'm Chinmay. I'm an engineer at Data Torrent, and uh, today I'll be taking through a couple of uh, couple of things. So, basically, uh, just to set the context right, we'll go through a little bit about Apex, uh, how how the platform looks like, how it is, how it integrates with uh, native Hadoop, and a couple of things on Malar library. Uh, next, we'll jump on to how Apex is using the BigTop as, uh, as, as a BigTop component and uh, various different features of BigTop that is being used. A lot of things are being uh, already showcased by Roman, but still, I'll, I'll go through a couple of them more. Uh, there's an easier way uh, that BigTop has provided, provided us to install Apex on any, any system that we want. So I'll run through that quickly as well. And finally, uh, as an outcome of all these things put together, we have created a test on sandbox environment, uh, which is a Docker image uh, having a single node cluster that will get started quickly on Apex. So I'll give a demo on that. Okay. So uh, starting with Apex, so basically it's a, a platform and runtime engine that enables development of scalable and fault tolerant distributed applications. So basically, uh, scalable means that uh, uh, depending on the throughput or latency, it should be able to scale at the configuration time and also at the runtime. The platform provides that uh, on, on that uh, uh, real-time application. And at the same time, it also provides a fault tolerant. So what it means is if, if there is a part of an application or even the whole application fails at some point, it should be able to restore back from a state where it is safe to restore back from. So that's we, in, in Apex terminology, we call it as checkpoint uh, as a committed state of an application. So uh, the platform provides functionality to the real-time uh, application to restore back from a safe state. That's fault tolerant. Uh, going ahead, uh, it's a Hadoop native application. So basically what it means is there is no separate service that is required for Apex to run. All the, all the stream engine that is built is into an ap application master we call it as TRAM. And uh, also uh, the containers of the yarn which are there. So both these things put together, it manages a streaming application and how the data is flowing from one container to another and so on. Okay. Apex is, can, can also be used for, uh, I mean, along with the stream processing, it can also be used for batch processing because uh, batch is like a special case of streaming. Keeping that in mind, even for the batch processing, it can, can be used. And being a streaming engine, it is uh, primarily targeted towards a high throughput and uh, low latency kind of requirements. And Apex does provide that very well. Now, along with Apex, so uh, there's a, there are two parts of Apex. One is Apex Core, which is a, which is the engine that that runs the distributed application. And along with that, there is a, another library called as Apex Malhar, which has a common uh, business business logic operators which can be directly used out of the box into an application. So we, we'll go through that a little bit. And uh, finally, I mean, it's a Java code. So anybody can write any custom logic, any business logic that you want and get, get your application running there. Okay. So that's a brief about Apex. Now uh, let's go through the platform overview, how, how it looks like. Okay. So the bottom layer that you see is, uh, it's, it's basically hardware or uh, operating system that on which it will be deployed. So it can be a, it can actually be a physical machine, it can be a virtual machine, it can be a Docker image, or it can even be going into a cloud. On the top of that, uh, we 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 require a Hadoop platform to be there. So all that we require for the streaming app engine to run is YAN and HDFS. So basically, uh, it supports over Hadoop 2.2. And uh, as you can see, there are uh, the major Hadoop distros which are there, uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, MapR, and Pivotal. Uh, it's, it's certified with all those major distributions. And it's, it's, not, it's not that it, it, it works only on these distributions. It can also work on the, the vanilla flavor of Hadoop as well. Now, over, over top of that, and basically using the features of YAN and HDFS, there's a streaming runtime engine that is there. And uh, as I said before, it is meant to provide a fault tolerant and high performance uh, applications. And at the same time, it also provides in-memory processing for the data in motion. Okay. Now, uh, having this as a base, as, as an engine, uh, which makes sure that application runs, there are multiple components built on top of it. And one of the component, as I said, is a Malar library. A lot of open source work that happens in Apex is contribution towards Malar library. And the contribution majorly happens is putting more and more operators or improving the operators to, make, to reach 
a production level quality and the right business business case for for the users to use it directly out of the box okay so that's a that, that's a large piece of work piece of work that happens in open source and uh, using all that we also have the streaming applications of course so there can be a bunch of streaming applications can be running on a single uh, platform there now this is all the open source side of things uh, there's a flavor of uh, uh, there's a flavor of apex uh, it's called as data torrent rts uh, it has a couple of more utilities which are there. So first of all, it's a management console. So that that provides a way for a user to see what is really going on in that application, what is the state of the application, and probably manage it as well. So that is all provided by management console. The second thing is the data visualization dashboard, and that's that's like one of the very important feature that you know when something is happening in an application, you want to see what really is happening. Okay. Uh, you want to see some graphs. You want to see some data in in real time. That's what the data visualization provides for you. And finally, uh, there's a graphical application design, uh, uh, you know, feature which is also there. So uh, though though Apex provides application to be built in Java, uh, this particular utility will provide you to just drag and drop the operators on the UI, connect them together, and launch the application. So that's that's a feature. That's a quick quick development that you, you can do there. That is provided in the data torrent RTS. Now, parallel to all these things, you see that there's a right-hand side, there's a REST API also, which is provided. Now, these, this particular piece of you know, the feature is really, really uh, important one, because REST API is something which joins all the different dots put together. So uh, you want to make sure that the data that is passing from one component to the other component is being communicated. Uh, the data that is flowing is queryable and so on. So all that is thing, all these things can be done by the REST APIs. Okay. Now that's about the platform overview. Going ahead is uh, let's let's see how how Apex natively integrates with Hadoop. Now uh, let me start from the uh, right top corner there. So uh, there are two ends to start an application, a streaming application. So one is Apex CLI, the other one is the DT gateway. Okay. So DT Gateway is basically part of Data Around RTS, and Apex CLI is part of the open source. Both these things talk to Resource Manager, which is part of the part of YAN, and uh, makes make sure that the application is started. Now you can see you can assume that this is a virtual cluster with the four no, four uh, uh, Hadoop nodes which are there, and each of them has a name node which is marked as NM, and Resource Manager is uh, one of those nodes, obviously. So basically what happens is resource manager is going to launch, launch an application master called as TRAM. Uh, you can see that in the second, uh, second node there. So that is the application master of, of YAN. And that is going to make sure that uh, all the different containers which are being deployed are managed for a streaming use case. The, number of, uh, the, the numbers that you see, one, 1 to 6, these are all the operators which are being deployed. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's, it can be deployed in variety of the fashion. So uh, the operator one and two are, are being deployed in different nodes, obviously in different, different containers. Three and five are being deployed in the same node, but in different containers. But four and six is something which is deployed in the same container. So these are essentially the two operators which are running in, the, uh, in a locality we, that we call it as container local. There's another variant of that also, which is thread local, in which the two operators can be deployed in the same thread. Okay, and there are there are a variety of reasons why one would do that because let's say uh, the data flowing between four to six is pretty high in the amount, so it's it's better to make it a part of, part of a single process. Okay, and that's when you would make it container local or thread local. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, native uh, how how Apex becomes a native Hadoop application. So basically, there is no other service that is running. All that it uses is the resource manager of YAN and its tram, basically the application master to make sure that the streaming engine is managing its work. Okay. And finally, uh, it uses HDFS for uh, storing of the persistent state. So as I said before, that uh, Apex uh, allows an application to be fault tolerant. Okay. And one of the need of fault tolerant is to make sure that the, the application, uh, application states are being saved persistently. And that's where the HDFS is used there. Okay. All right, going ahead as a as the next important component of Apex, uh, Apache Apex is the Malar library. Okay. Now, uh, as I said before, the large part of the development that happens in open source is in Malar library, and this is an outcome of it. Okay. 
we have various different operators which are present. Some of them are like provided with a first class citizenship and uh, everything is supported to make sure that, uh, I mean, or at least they are intended to make sure that it is a production level quality. Some of them are still getting into that through that process, but a lot of them are already there. So if you see the, uh, on the on the input side or messaging side, you have Kafka based operators, Solace, Flume, and so on. Uh, on the NoSQL, as well as the SQL side, you have a bunch of operators there, including Cassandra, HBase, and MySQL, JDBC operators. So the JDBC is a big bucket for everything else. Uh, on the file system side, we have HDFS, uh, Hive, and NFS. So basically, it's, it's a basically file system operator. So that essentially covers everything else. We have a couple of uh, formats that we, we support, uh, which are XML, JSON, CSV, Evro, and Parquet. And there are a lot more coming up. So th the intention of the parser is to make sure that the data that is flowing is in raw format. So process it, parse it, so that it is ready for the right processing there. Okay. And uh, the next coming up are the uh, transform and analytics operators. So this is where the real work happens. Uh, so basically, if you want to filter some data, or if you want to apply some rules, or you want to modify the data using expressions, deduplicate the data, or enrich an existing data from some external source, that's what transformation does. And at the same time, something about analytics also. So uh, we have dimensional operators, which can be used for a lot of aggregation work, which can be done. Okay, And some other which are there for supporting the protocols. And finally, we have a couple of them related to Elasticsearch. Solar and Twitter APIs as well. Okay. Uh, any questions till now? All right. Okay. Now let's uh, go to the next slide where we we jump into the big top world. Okay. So uh, Roman already covered a lot of points. He has shown a lot of things about Apex anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm going to uh, I'm just going to quickly go through them again. So. Uh, Actually, BigTop has made a lot, life easier, a lot easier for Apex because you know one of the key features that it provides is deployment. Okay, and uh, it, it does provide the Puppet recipes that he, he already showed you, and uh, it, it it uses Vagrant and Puppet recipes for easy deployments into the cluster. And uh, the three node cluster that he talked about, that's one of the fantastic thing to, things to test out your application. So uh, you can spawn multiple node clusters for Docker's, for VMs, and OpenStack as well. So that's that's a great thing that BigTop provides. Uh, other 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 than that, uh, it being a Java application, it can it it it, it there's an uh, RPM and Debian packages which also gets created for Apex. And uh, this is the list that you see for CentOS, Fedora, OpenSUSE, uh, Ubuntu, and Debian. This is the list that I picked up from the CI web page that he showed. Okay. So all these things are uh, being being all these the the, the packages for all these operating system are being created for Apex. Okay. And finally, another important factor of it is the validation of the installation. So right now, Apex supports two, two tests that, that is there. So first one is the package test. So uh, package test makes sure that the package that is installed is correctly installed. So that is really at a package level, and nothing really runs there. But the second one is really important. So it's smoke test. Smoke test uh, makes sure that a deployed cluster is having the right installation by running it. Okay. So the smoke test actually runs an Apex application and C validates that everything that is running there is fine. Okay, that that's a very important aspect when it comes to uh, distributed systems. Okay. Now, uh, talking a little bit about uh, installations, and I've actually uh, split it down into two sections. So, uh, current Big Top release is 1.1.0. Okay, so uh, the, the steps are very very simple. You one need, one just needs to add the Big Top repository uh, to to the system. Uh, as, as Hadoop is required for Apex, so uh, all you need to do is just apt get install Hadoop, apt, uh, or yum install Hadoop. That will install Hadoop for you, basically. And uh, for 1.1.0, uh, Apex is not part of the Big Top repository. So uh, you can go to the CI, uh, the, the web page that Roman showed. Uh, you can download whatever Debian or RPM package you are, that you are interested in for a, whatever operating system it is and just run the respective commands for him. So the dpkg or rpm will install the apex for you. Okay, and that's that's quick. But this is something which is we are expecting to happen very soon in in bigtop 1.2 and this is a possible future url for bigtop repository. I hope that is not wrong. <laughs> uh, 
all you need to do after BigTop 1.2 is released is app get install Apex. And it will ensure that if Hadoop is not installed, the BigTop Hadoop is not installed, it will install it themselves because it is added as a dependency. So if you want to get started with Apex, that's all you need to do. Yum install Apex or app get install Apex. And you are ready to go. <coughs> so that's the that's that's installation for BigTop Apex. <coughs> now coming to the next, uh, Coming to the next section is uh, Apex Docker Sandbox. Now, uh, I, we were planning previously to show uh, how, how, to, how to install things like that. But we thought that it's probably more interesting to show the end result of what it is. So, uh, we, uh, so what we have done is we have created a Docker image. It's a test sandbox environment uh, for quickly getting started with Apex. And all the components which are deployed here, including the Hadoop and Apex, are are coming from BigTop. Okay. So this particular Docker image has HDFS and YARN services already running. It has the Apex installed. And all you need to do to start up with Apex is the, the two commands that have been there. Okay. So the first, first command is going to pull a Docker image from, from the Docker hub. And the second command is just going to start it. Okay. So uh, without uh, waiting, waiting more, let's actually Go to a light demo. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay, this is going to be a little tricky typing while holding the mic. Okay, so all I'm doing is just switching to one of my system. All right. So this is uh, this is the system that I have. Now, if I go to, let me just pick up the command that has been, that has been shown here. So uh, I'm not going to run the first command here because I have uh, the Docker image for, uh, for the Apex is already downloaded with me. So let me just show that. So the command for that to see is Docker images. OK, so you can see that there's a, a Docker image already being downloaded for Apex. OK, and that is for Ubuntu 14.24. Why is this not coming? Okay. All right. Can you see this font? Okay. So uh, uh, I have a Docker image already downloaded here for Apex, and this is the other three image that you see. They are also provided by uh, BigTop. So I'm just taking a Liberty here to uh, to showcase some some another feature of picked up that you know they have a couple of uh, Docker images which are being there to uh, for as a ready setup for uh, using picked up so you can download that, those as well. But let's let's talk about uh, the Apex image. Okay, so I have downloaded it here, and uh, all I need to do is take this command. Okay, and start it. <coughs> So as you can see now, uh, it's starting the Hadoop services automatically for you. So let's give it a couple of seconds. But basically, what this this is doing is it is starting the uh, it's starting the HDFS that is uh, name node and data nodes. It's also starting the secondary name node. And on the YAN side, it is starting the resource manager, node manager, and timeline server. Okay. And just for the sake of convenience, uh, I've also installed the SSH service into that. So one could SSH into this and still get things running. Okay, so let's give it a second. Okay, cool. So uh, that's all. Your Docker image has started now. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> along with this, uh, you can s the Apex is uh, Apex is installed on this. You have BigTop Hadoop installed on this. You have Hadoop started, and is Ap Apex is ready to use. So you can see that how quick it is to start. Now, just as a tutorial, what we have created is a man page for Apex here. So you can you could go to this. And you could you could see how how to use Apex CLI for for its use case. So, uh, so you can go to there are some examples and commands which are there. Uh, okay, this needs some update. This is Apex. It's not DD anymore. But uh, what we're going what I'm going to show here is actually going to launch an application inside Docker Image. Okay. But uh, let me do one thing before that. Let me exit from this. Uh, 
let's use some other Docker features which are there. Okay, and let me clear this particular Docker image. Okay, I, I just don't want that nostalgic. Okay, cool. So let's start a Docker image with some other parameters. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is mount my home directory. to a path called as workspace, okay? The next thing, the next thing I'm gonna do is expose a couple of ports from this particular Docker so that I can show you some of the uh, cool things that, uh, cool web UIs that Yarn and Hadoop provide. So, so this one is, so this one is for uh, the HDFS uh, web UI. Uh, this one is for the resource manager. And uh, this one is for the node manager, okay? So once that is exposed, what this means is that from my host machine or even from outside, because I'm actually associating into that different machine, I can access uh, the content of what is there inside a Docker image, okay? And let's launch it. Now you can see that every time I do this Docker run, it is going to create a container, it is going to start that container and start all the Hadoop processes. But it's not necessary that you have to do it every time. There's a docker start command. Uh, the docker container that I showed, that I deleted previously, you can just do a docker start minus i and the name of the container and it will restore back from the previous state. Okay. And start up all the services again as well. Okay. So you don't need to do a docker run every time or create a container every time. Now, uh, once this is started, I'm going to go to our web page. Right, so, okay, you can see that this is my Hadoop system, which is there. And just to confirm this address, this is, I, this is, I, this is the address of my host machine. Okay, I've, I've, uh, I port forwarded the 57 port to my host machine. Okay. Next is let's let's open the the resource manager port. Okay. Now just for the sake of reference, I've opened it, but let's let's do some real work. Now, as I said, that the Apex once this Apex application is once once this Docker image is started, all one has to do is type an Apex command, and that gives the Apex CLI. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's launch an application. Now, the reason why I, uh, I mounted my home directory to, to this Docker image is because I, I need to pick some source code. I need to pick a package, which is a PyDemo. Uh, so there's a there's a sample demo application called as PyDemo, which is basically calculating a value of Pi using the Mon Mon Monte Carlo uh, estimation algorithm. Okay, but that, that's a, just, just to show that it's a uh, streaming application that is demoing it, okay? You can run any any level of complex application in this. <laughs> it doesn't need to be this. But let's run that then. Okay. All right. So let's start the first application which is there in that package. And you can see that the application has been launched. Now I can check list application from here and you can see that the state of the application is accepted. But I can actually go to this uh, this UI also, and the state of the application. Yeah, it, it's gone into running now. Okay. Now uh, let's let's see wh how many containers are there. So there are four containers being allocated. Usually the first container which is there is a stream that is the application master for for the streaming application, and the three other containers are basically the uh, the operators which are there. Okay. Now there's another way to check that. What are the operators? So there's a command called as list operators. This might take a bit. All right, so here, what you can see is there are three operators being deployed here in three different containers, okay? So the first operator is a random event generator, so it's just generating the random events. Second event is the Monte Carlo uh, estimation formula that, that, is, that it is applying for the Pi demo. And last operator is a console output operator. So all this operator does is whatever is the output of the previous operator, it dumps it on the SD out. Okay. So these are the three containers which are there. And let's see the output of 
this this particular container the std output of this particular container so that is 002 okay uh, so okay so this is 002 if you go to logs of this yeah this is some this always happens right yep there you see a value of pi if you keep refreshing, it is giving a new value out. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea here is to not show how, how pi is calculated. But the idea here is to show that you can run a streaming application so easily that all you need to do is just launch a Docker image. Okay. Now if you want to shut down an application, all you need to do is shut down app, and the application will be killed. You can check that from list apps again. So the, you can see that application state has gone to finished. Okay. Now with that, I uh, think that's all I have. Uh, any questions about this? So the the important point to mention here is that uh, other than the use of getting started on Apex, uh, all this has been possible because the Docker provides such a functionality for deployment, and it provides a way for creating the packages so easily. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. That's all, guys. Thank you so much.